Yo, you already know the vibes, man. It's your boy Dom Workman. And look, if you've been following the channel, you know that back in September, the first build that I made and the first build that I dropped was a 6 1 point guard. And the way I set that build up, it was really designed to be more of a playmaker first and a scorer second. And that's really how I like to approach the game as a point guard. But like I tell y'all all the time, when you wild out here with randoms, it's kind of hard to take that approach. And trust me, I come out here every day and I try to be that pass first kind of player, try to get everybody touches down the court, get everybody involved. And I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. Most of the time, all I'm watching is a turnover, a bad shot, a missed shot. And the reality is a lot of these guys don't need to be having the ball. They have no playmaking ability. They have no IQ. So for them to be productive, they're going to have to be set up. And in my experience, the more I look to score, the more I shoot the ball, the more often I'm winning the game. So because I found myself needing to be more of a scorer than a playmaker, I decided to remake my build. And as you can assume, I took a little bit of a hit on the playmaking, you know, the passing and all that. But this build is a way better shooter and it's causing a lot of problems out here in the wreck. Now I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. Overall, I think my original 6-1 is the better point guard build. But the problem is in order for that build to be truly effective and play to its potential, you're really gonna need proper spacing. And you're probably thinking like, okay, you can say that for every build. And yeah, that's true. But when you're 6-1 and you're a small player, it holds even more weight. And the way I set that build up, I had a 91 layup, a 93 midi, and an 86 three ball. Now, when I was out there with people that I knew, it was like I was unstoppable. But the second I brought that build into the random wreck, I'm trying to get to my midi spots. I got dudes running across. I got dudes jumping at me from the paint. So when the spacing got bad on that build, it got real uncomfortable to play on because it's like you never know when you're really open. But as y'all can see on this build right here, most of my offense is coming from behind a three point line as opposed to inside the arc. And even though I could three hunt a little bit on my first 6 1 build, it just wouldn't be as consistent or reliable as it is on this build here. And especially if you load up with a center or, you know, some bigs that are going to set you picks, it's going to be automatic buckets because y'all already know none of these dudes in the wreck know how to guard a pick and roll. So it's really simple offense. Like right here, look, I just come down, big man sets the pick. And all I do is hit one little crossover move and I get a wide open three. But as y'all can see, man, we in the fourth quarter and we down 64 to 70. And like I tell y'all all the time, bro, in a situation like this, I feel like I'm obligated to shoot the ball. Because you want your best shooters taking the shots late in the game. And I know nobody else out here got a higher three ball than me. I got a 97 three ball on this build. Now, right here, we down one. And I'm just trying to take my time to make sure I find a good look. Because y'all know 2K be hoeing with the contest. But the annoying thing about playing on this build is that you can score your ass off and feel unstoppable out there. But if your teammates can't get stops, you're still going to find yourself in close games. But I'm able to find some daylight off the screen. My man goes under. So I just go around, pop open for a wide open three, and put us up two. So now all we got to do is get one stop and the game is over. But you ever be in a wreck and just be wondering like, yo, how do they keep getting wide open shots? Well, this is how right here, as y'all can see, pink haired dude just falls asleep. I don't know what he's doing, but luckily for us, he ends up missing a shot. So now all I got to do is hold the ball and knock down the free throws. But y'all see the dumb shit that you be having to deal with here in the wreck with these randoms, man. Like, I really don't understand why some of these dumb niggas play this game, bro. They really don't need to be on this shit. Like, I would literally take an AI over most of these dudes in the wreck. And that's sad, bro. But as y'all can see, man, I knocked down both free throws to seal the game. And we get out of there with the W. Now, this game right here, I don't know what this center was on, bro, but if I ever match up with him again, I'm backing out the lobby. Because like I tell y'all all the time, bro, a lot of these dudes in the wreck are mad delusional. And I actually played with the same dude the night before, and he was in the game chat arguing with the point guard. I'm like, bro, we went in the game. What are y'all arguing about? He's in there telling him, yo, pass the ball, pass the ball. I'm open, I'm open. And all this dumb shit. And the whole time he's calling for the ball, he's not even really open. So he wants dudes to throw turnovers. But in this game right here, I wasn't in the game chat. But I'm doing my thing. As y'all can see, I'm scoring pretty efficiently. And I'm just trying to do what I got to do to make sure that we get this dub. But for whatever reason, dude apparently had a problem with me too. But like I tell y'all all the time, bro, I don't have the time to go into the game chat. It's not even that I don't have the time. I clearly have the time. But I just don't care to do it. 
Cause if I go into the game chat to argue with a nigga, I'm bringing nothing but facts. And the facts mean nothing to a delusional ass nigga. I'm telling you right now, you're gonna be talking to a brick wall. But as y'all can see, man, we down right now. I'm getting double teamed. I'm hitting the open man. He bricking it. But I ain't really gonna get on him because he was hitting a couple of shots. But you know, it is what it is. You make some, you miss some. Now this play right here, I think this is the type of shit that got the big man tight during the game. But y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. Did I make the right decision right there? But now we down two in the fourth with 38 seconds left in the game. Now he inbounds it to that dude and then he calls a timeout. I didn't call that timeout. Cause y'all know me bro, like I said, I just come in here to do my job and if I do my job and everybody else doing bullshit, we can lose, I don't care. But these dudes are so afraid that I'ma get a three off that they're often to foul me. So they really have no confidence in their defense bro cause they're really about to allow me to just tie the game up. But they're gonna foul me again and put me on the line and I end up knocking both of them down. So now it's 18 seconds left in the game man, we tied up, the point guard throws a bad pass so now we out on the break. Now me personally, I would've went straight up with that, but the big man gets the board and I'm wide open over here. What is he doing? And this is why I hate when low IQ centers try to be point guards. Just throw the ball to the point guard. You got the board, you did your job. Now RBA the ball to the point guard, like I got 36 points. It should not be rocket science about who should have the ball with the game on the line. But for whatever reason, he refuses to give me the ball again. He throws it to the corner who's completely covered and we get nothing. But yeah, man, I just wanted to show y'all the type of madness that i be having to go through in here in the wreck even when you're playing perfectly fine but to my surprise we did string together a couple of stops and we were able to get out of there with the dub but if i ever see that bald head motherfucker in my lobby again i'm out of there so here's a quick look at what my build looks like but i'm gonna get into the builder and show y'all some slight changes that you can make to make the build a little bit better so all this is gonna stay the same right here 6 1 point guard 160 on the weight 6 4 wingspan and on this new version of the build you're not losing anything of value i think all i did was i removed a little bit of close shot and a little bit of strength but in doing that i was able to get a 99 free throw and a little bit of post control and of course this ain't a post score or nothing like that but it's nice to have them badges in case you get jammed up in the paint or if it's late in the shot clock and you gotta shoot a turnaround midi or something like that you know you got post fade phenom to help you out so just having those things in your back pocket i think it adds another dimension to the build and it makes it a little bit more versatile now for the job and layup y'all know i would like to go with an 85 but on this build i just couldn't afford it and i was willing to make that sacrifice on this build because for the play style that i'm going for i'm really not going to be a attacking the rim that often and if i do drive i'm probably just gonna end up shooting a floater or something like that and with the 80 driving layup i'm gonna be able to get the trey young pack and in my opinion that has the best floaters in the game now on the shooting i took a little bit of a sacrifice here as well because y'all know i like to have the 88 midi but y'all see what we got going on with the three ball 97 three ball you get that gold limitless and hall of fame blinders and that hall of fame blinders is one of the main reasons why i made this build because like I said, as a smaller guard, it feels like you get contested a lot more. So I wanted to see what kind of difference, if any, Hall of Fame blinders would make. And so far, I think it's worth it. And the last thing I want to note real quick is that I went with the 92 speed with ball. And the main reason why I did that was to try out the Trey Young and the Steph Curry dribble styles. Now, I didn't really rock with the Trey one that much, but I have been using Steph and so far it's been pretty solid. But when you go through with the build, you're going to get shades of Trey Young, Steph Curry, and Steve Nash. So that's pretty crazy if you ask me. And the build is going to be called a three-point shot hunter. So before I get out of here, man, I'm going to give you all the sigs and the jump shot that I'm running on this build. But as always, man, I appreciate all the support. Let me know what y'all think about the build and the gameplay in the comments. And if you ain't following me on Twitter, man, be sure to give me a follow over there at BeLikeDom. And y'all already know what it is, man. Stay up. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one.